The following is a live presentation of CBC Sports. West Coast fan lunacy was in full bloom for Friday's Smite Division Final. When the Canucks came out for Game 3, they had history on their side. Only two losses in their last nine visits. But the Brakes went against them in this one. Cliff Ronning had a goal disallowed in the first 20 minutes. In the second period, Jim Sadlack, who missed the first two games with back spasms, also had a goal disallowed. Same old story for the Canucks in Game 3. Outmanned, outgunned by the attacking Kings. What causes that? How do you solve it? Uh, you know, I think it comes from uh, getting caught in between being aggressive and, and trying to sit back. And uh, we have to go, go ahead, be aggressive, but do it smartly. He was the flying fin at Northlands Coliseum. He's a re-energized Yari Curry at the Great Western Forum. His 4-2 goal in Game 3 was a classic, a pure game-breaker, and vintage Curry. The second part of the Kings' knockout blow was delivered by a KO master, Wayne Gretzky. Number 99 was smiling and scoring his 100th career playoff goal while his teammates were hitting. Today, game four with the LA Kings hoping to put the Canucks on the ropes and take a commanding 3-1 series lead. Oh, beautiful, for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountains of majesty, America, America, God shed His grace on thee and ground thy good with brotherhood from sea. teams are going with lineups identical to the ones that skated in game three. That means Kirk McLean will be in goal again for the Vancouver Canucks. He has gone all the way this postseason with a record of five and four and making his third straight start for the Los Angeles Kings. Kelly Rudy Rob Stauber started this playoff round. Stauber was the goaltending hero for the Kings in their victory over the Calgary Flames, but Kelly Rudy has played the last two for the Kings. Dan Barrowelli is the man in charge this afternoon. Sweet Knox and Ray Scapinello are the linesmen, and Rob Schick is the standby referee. Game four underway. It's interesting in the playoffs this year of the nine series that have been decided. The fourth game was won by the team that won the series. The one exception was the New Jersey Pittsburgh series where the Devils staved off elimination trailing three nothing by winning game four. So game four I would suggest might be rather important. And especially for the Vancouver Canucks they'd love to win here get the split go home have a two out, two out of three with them having home ice advantage. Taylor forces the puck back into the Vancouver zone. The missile along the boards, checked by Robitaille. Cliff Ronnie tried to get it out. It comes back to the point. Jitnik winds up the save and the big rebound, and that's picked up by Trevor Linden. And Ronnie knocks it out to center ice. Robitaille takes it back to his own line. Robitaille and Thomas Sandstrom, the only two minus players for the Los Angeles Kings so far in the series. And Thomas Sandstrom's shot just went by. Back comes Bure. Bure trying to waltz in a backhand shot, and Rudy kicks that one to the corner, picked up by Sandstrom. Sandstrom rink wide for Gretzky. Gretzky winds up, and his shot is blocked by Kirk McLean and flipped off to the boards for Tim Hunter. 
Moves back at center ice. Here's Robitaille with a shot. That's high off the glass. It comes all the way back to the line. Semenov comes in with Bure. Semenov with a shot up high. He races after the rebound in the corner. He gets it to Bure. Bure being watched by Tim Waters. Trying to get away. He does. He feeds it out for Semenov. A quick shot. And that is kicked away by Rudy. Semenov gets it back to the line. Lume flipped it to the corner and Waters goes after it. Pavel Bure had a long, long shift. He's been out for at least two minutes. Cortnell takes a rink-wide pass and is tied up in the slot area. Cortnell has been reunited with Sandlack and Nedved in hopes, I'm sure, on the part of Pat Quinn that he can get Peter Nedved rolling. They'd like to get Peter Nedved rolling. Big factor during the regular season for the Canucks. I thought Yuri Slager might get back into the lineup, but he, Pat Quinn decided to go with the same crew he had in Game 3, and they played very well for two periods in Game 3. Uh, got back to their old bad ways in Period 3. And the Kings, when you're winning, a lot of coaches are superstitious, but everybody played pretty well for the L.A. Kings, so Barry Melrose went with the same lineup as he had in Game 3. So far, the Vancouver Canucks have kept the Kings to the outside and let Kirk McLean see all the shots. A long shot there handled easily by Kirk McLean. Gretzky with a lot of jump in this series. Four goals and three assists through the three games that have been played, with the Kings leading the series, of course, two games to one. Harvey Huddy leads in plus minus at plus 11. Takes the puck up the right wing side, a long pass broken up in the neutral zone. Gary Curry couldn't go anywhere with it. Jimmy Carson, who has seen limited ice time really in this series, is out there now with Yari Curry. Here's a long shot that's blocked. Reichel is playing the right side, and now Sador is bumped in front of the net, and a little pushing and shoving takes place following the whistle. And Dan Marwelli is having words with a number of the Canucks and a number of the Kings. Daryl Sador has played very well for the LA Kings. He hasn't been on the ice for any of the goals against, and we talked to a few of the Canuck management types, and they said that the Kings' younger players are the difference. Sador and Zitnik, as compared to Slager and Nedved for the Canucks. Sador and Zitnik have been very good, and Slager and Nedved have not raised the level of their game at all in the second round of the playoffs. Well, that's one thing coaches always talk about is how they expect some of their younger players to raise their level of play in the postseason. There's a guy who has certainly raised his level of play, Warren Reichel. He has 11 points in the playoffs. He only has 13 career points in regular season play in the National Hockey League. And now Jeff Cortnell is trying to draw a penalty. He's in talking to Charlie Huddy. And I think Jeff Cortnell is going to get a penalty as Dan Marawelli, who has warned the players on both teams, and Cortnell's going off, and I think they're both going off, Cortnell and Huddy. And they're both getting unsportsmanlike penalties. Well, Pat Quinn was upset with the play of his team in game two, and he felt that in game three, they continued to make those unforced errors that cost them the hockey game in the third period. He was a little upset as well with a couple of possible Vancouver goals that were disallowed, one by Cliff Ronning and the other by Jim Sandlack. That was early in the game, and when you talk to them, and they realized going into the third, it was a 2-2 tie. They were on the road, and their team did not play nearly as well as the LA Kings did in the third period. Unsportsmanlike conduct, the call against Charlie Huddy and Cortland. Passes beyond the reach of Adams. Murray Craven races in from the other corner for Adams. A quick turnaround shot is blocked before it gets to the net. Gretzky circles back into his own zone. Cliff Ronning was saying that Gretzky is skating as well as he has ever seen the great one move. And Gretzky used a pretty good move to escape a check as he came up into the center area. Here's Adams looking in front for Craven. Now he tries to move into the slot. Here's a breakaway for Gretzky. Mercer 
Anderson trying to catch up with him. Gretzky going in. And the save is made by Kirk McLean, and the net comes off its supports. Gretzky had to go to his backhand as Dana Merzen showed some pretty good fit foot in racing back to try and check him. Wayne Gretzky at the end of a long shift. He had just made one rush. Now watch Dana Merzen. He's closing in dives and keeps Gretzky to the outside. By the time Gretzky shoots it, he's got nothing to shoot at and shoots it behind the net. Good recovery by Dana Merzen. He forced Gretzky to the backhand and why? 16.09 remaining in the opening period. It's still scoreless. Merzen dodges a hit from Blake. The puck goes into the corner. Lume pinches in from the point. Comes out front beyond the reach of Ronning. Ronning takes it to the line. Merzen runs a little interference for him. Ronning, being bothered by Zitnik, manages to control the puck, throws it in for Linden. Up front, and Lume fanned on it. Back come the Kings. Zitnik throws it rink wide for Curry. His shot rolls to the goal mouth, and it's picked up by Ronning. Ronning dodges a check. For Merzen, over to Linden. Linden drops it off for running. Back to Linden. Linden throws it into the slot. Nobody there. And Robitai has it for the Kings. Robitai for McSorley. McSorley takes a shot up high on McLean, and he has to hold it with Robitai skating in on him. And then Linden took exception to Robitai swiping at the puck that McLean was holding. And now we have Lidster and McSorley. Having an exchange out near the blue line. Pat Quinn wanted his team to play with more emotion. After the whistle, they have been in a few of these scrums already tonight. And I'm sure Pat Quinn appreciates that. He wants his team to use their size and use their more aggressiveness. Now watch LA. Alexei Zitnik gets trapped, and there he recovers. Look at the recovery. Robitaille took his man. Zitnik came back and picked off the puck. As we look at Trevor Linden, he went after Robitaille as Robitaille poked at the glove of Kirk McLean. And Merwell, he's talked to the teams twice already, and we haven't quite played five minutes of this game. Dan Merrill will leave Los Angeles and head to Toronto to handle game five of the series between the Leafs and St. Louis. Deadlocked at two. Ten seconds remaining in the unsportsmanlike conduct penalties to Cortnell and Huddy. Lidster takes the back of the net for Didick. Didick rink wide to Seminoff to Lidster. He shoots it in off the end boards. Rudy steers it to the corner. Penalized players back in the ice. Bure runs into a hit behind the goal. Huddy can't get it out. Bure has it. Didick goes for the net. Now it comes out to Seminoff. Seminoff with a shot. And it is blocked before it gets to the net. It's loose in front of the goal and finally flipped out by the Kings. 1441 remaining in the opening period. Game four of the Spice Division final. Kings leading two games to one. Game five takes place Tuesday night at the Pacific Coliseum. Mellon almost steals it in front for Granado. He chops it towards the net, and the bouncing puck is bluffed by McLean. And again, the Canucks turnover in their own zone created that chance for the LA Kings. Types of things that has, have concerned Pat Quinn in games two and three. And he said it's not the lack of effort, it's just the lack of thinking. His team has not played very smart hockey in the last couple of games. Craven against Gretzky in the faceoff circle to the right of McLean. 5-3, the Kings have the edge in shots on goal. But the game is still scoreless. From the faceoff, Gretzky, as he does often, tried to drive it towards the net, and it just went wide. A two-line pass will uh, bring the faceoff back just inside the Vancouver Blue Line. Bundy by his teammates, as in King Kong Bundy, in an initiation ceremony when he had his head shaved, he said he looked a lot like the pro wrestler. No. Well, About 400 pounds later. <laughs> Buck 
Puck is stolen by Gretzky for Reichel. Reichel tried to move around. Babbage still has it. Penalty coming up. The first power play of the hockey game will go to the Los Angeles Kings. And a nice move by Warren Reichel. And he says playing with Wayne Gretzky has really improved his skill level. And playing on the same line, you're going to do some things. Look at this move here on Babbage. Pulls it inside. Babbage knows he's beaten and takes the penalty. And Reichel is going to remain out there on the power play as Dave Babbage goes to the penalty box. Reichel will be there with Sandstrom and Grinetsky. I think that's a pretty good compliment to the way Reichel has been playing when Gary Melrose has the confidence to leave Reichel on the ice in a odd man situation. And that rush was created by another Canuck turnover in the neutral zone. And again, Gretzky drove it to the net from the faceoff. Rob Blake trying to set things up. Moves it to Sandstrom. His shoot-in is blocked. The puck is loose. And Blake managed to uh, block Linden from getting to it, allowing Jetnik to go back and recover. 30 remaining in the penalty to Babbage. 125. Blake gets to center, puts on the brakes to Gretzky. Gretzky tried to throw it into the slot to Reichel, who was driving for the net, but it was broken up and dumped down the ice. Zeminov is prevented from getting to it by Blake. Jetnik moves it ahead to Curry. Curry runs into a check. Reichel is forced to circle back. Bounces away from Gretzky. The plane leaves it back of the net for Lister up along the boards. Chopped out to center. Picked up now by Semenov. Semenov coming in. Backhand pass for Burray. And Burray was tied up. Couldn't get to it. Back comes Curry. Curry in across the line. Flips it to the corner. Carson had gone to the front of the net. Was knocked down there. It comes to the line to Daryl Sador. Back of the net for Robitaille. Robitaille out front for Curry. He couldn't get a stick on it. And Bure picks it up and shoots it down the ice with 25 seconds remaining in the Babbage penalty. Good pursuit by the Vancouver Canucks. The only time they were in trouble was on a shootout by Doug Lidster that wasn't high enough. Linda takes Sador out of the play. The puck is fired back into the Los Angeles zone. Sador's pass for Robitaille. He's spun around by Linden. Linden doing a very good penalty killing job for the Canucks here in the first period. Craven takes the pass as Babbage comes out of the penalty box. Drop pass for Babbage. Babbage tried to feed it through to Linden and it was blocked. Robitaille races after the loose puck at center but Merzen gets there first. Canucks make a change as they dump it in deep with 11.40 remaining in a still scoreless opening period at the Great Western Forum. Marty McSorley for Corey Miller. Miller throws it out front. No shot as Jim Sandlack is able to grab the loose puck. Nedved goes rink wide. Lister will shoot it in. Nedved actually was looking for Portnell, but the pass would have been behind him. Donnelly knocks it off the boards to center. Millen couldn't pick it up, and it's fired back in. Rudy way out of his net to play it along the boards away from Portnell. Lidster trying to keep it in. It's knocked out, and Donnelly, who has great speed, comes in against Didick. He tried to go cross ice and comes in front. They jam away. They score. Dave Taylor, no goal. It's being waved off by Marrowelli. And I don't know about this one. Are they saying Dave Taylor was in the crease when this one comes out? Or did Dan Marwelli blow the whistle before that went in? Well, Taylor is arguing, but his complaints will fall upon Depp. This goal is disallowed because Dan Marwelli said he blew the whistle before the puck goes in the net. Now let's listen. Well, over the crowd noise at the Great Western Forum, it's difficult to tell, but uh, it did look as though that puck may have crossed the line before the whistle went. 
Here's Linda getting set, moving in a shot, and Rudy makes the save, and Mameso crashes the net and crashes into Rudy, and then Blake takes Mameso down. And Mameso is getting a penalty for sure, and I don't know whether Rob Blake is. And now Mameso gives Wayne Gretzky a shot. And either way, the Canucks got a break because that's a quick whistle if it did blow before the puck went in the net. Now Mameso is getting a penalty for crashing the goaltender. And we saw a lot of that today in the Leaf game. And here's the shot. Look at how long it takes before Mameso gets there. Rudy's got it. And there's Mameso. A slashing call against Mameso. And Mameso as he skated towards the penalty box at Wayne Gretzky in his path and he sent number 99 flying. But damn very well he was already headed to the penalty box had his back to that play and Mameso is lucky that he didn't get another one. King's power play not very good at home and it's not very good overall. 0 for 1 again tonight they didn't have a shot on their first power play attempt and really never had a chance to get set up. They've had difficulty penetrating the Vancouver blue line with the man advantage. The Canucks in game two had four players strung out across the blue line and uh, Los Angeles trying to drive it in but they didn't have anybody with any speed going in to get it. And when you shoot it in like in a building like this if you don't have that speed the goaltender can't go out and play it but the defenseman can turn and get back first and clear the zone. Rob Blake works his way to center. He's forced to stop at center, and Jitnik will have to circle back, and the Kings will have to try and regroup again. Two-line pass as it was touched by Conacher. Wayne Gretzky has really come on in these playoffs. He's playing like he's having some fun again, and the rest of the L.A. Kings are playing as well. Gretzky, 17 points. Doug Gilmore had a pair today, tied with Gretzky. And Ray Ferraro, 11 goals, three assists, working on a Cy Young type playoff, 11 and three. He's at 14 points. And that'll be it for Dale Howerton. Gretzky was 17 points this year. The NHL record he holds is 47 points in the 1985 season. Taylor shot right on the rebound. Back to Sonor. A shot. That's why the rebound. Gretzky throws it towards the net. And McLean makes a big save off number 99. And this one is Kurt McLean just not giving up on the play. And you see Wayne Gretzky is shaking his head. Experienced goaltenders, you never give up on the play, even though you think you're beaten. You always give it that dive across. And here's the play set up. It goes off the boards. Now look at McLean. He knows he's beaten. He gets the leg out, sticks the hand out, and he makes the save just on his ability to react. And you look at Wayne Gretzky's reaction. Gretzky said in game two where McLean made a spectacular save off him on a very similar play that he thought he had scored. And McLean took it away. Here's Murray with speed. Burrow going in alone. Save the loose puck. Savinov picks it up in the corner. Penalty coming up against Los Angeles. But Rudy with a big save on Pavel Bure, who shared the league lead this year with Steve Eiserman with seven shorthanded goals and he almost put the Canucks in front. And that's what the Canucks need some excitement from number 10 and watch Pavel Bure go around Marty McSorley and McSorley right there gets a hook on him. So Bure can't come back and Kelly Rudy makes a good save. McSorley goes off for hooking. Remember how Bure scored on the spinorama goal on Rudy earlier and McSorley's making sure he doesn't come back. He has to go to his backhand. And Rudy makes the save. 109 remaining in the penalty to Mameso as Marty McSorley goes to the penalty box for hooking at 10.08 of this still scoreless opening period. The Canucks set a team record this year with 18 shorthanded goals. They have yet to produce one shorthanded in the playoffs. is tied up along the boards Yari Curry who drew praise from teammates and foes alike for his performance in game three is out there now with Gretzky the 
broken up by Zitnik. Tried to feed it ahead to Gretzky beyond his reach, and McLean comes out to play to the corner to Lume. But again, Wayne Gretzky in behind both Canuck defensemen almost picked up that pass for a breakaway. Seminoff leaves it up the line for Bore. His shot saved the big rebound, and that's brought back by the Kings. Renato, weak wide pass for Donnelly. He couldn't reach it. Bore is taken in against the boards hard by Granato as Seminoff comes up by Spurs and goes for the net. He crashes into the net. It's in. He scores. Even though the net comes off, the goal will come. Charlie Huddy is complaining. But Merzen redirected that centering pass past Kelly Rooney, crashed into the net, took it off its supports, but it's 1 0 Vancouver. Now, watch, here's the play, and they going to the net. Is the puck in before it comes off? Dana Merzen's there, he's got his hands up, that's in. And watch when Merzen touches it. Pass across, Merzen right there reaching, he's outside the crease, the puck is definitely in before Merzen goes crashing into the post. Something the Canucks got in game one, defenseman jumping up into the play, as Dana Merzen just did, and he makes it 1-0. And fourth point, score number five, Dana Merzen. Assistance number two. Babbage, back of the net. For running, running goes rink wide to Cortnall. Cortnall trying to throw it out front for Mameso. He was being tied up by Waters. Kept in at the line by Babbage, then it was knocked out by Taylor. Semenov and Bure draw the assists on the goal at 11.09, Merzen's third of the playoffs. Cortno. Leaves it for Ronnie, back to the line. Babbage with a shot, that's held by Kelly Rudy. Pavel Bure took the hit in his own zone and threw the puck up to Anatoly Semenov, and that created the chance. Tony Granato really flattened Bure, and Semenov a nice pass across to Merzen. Merzen crashing the net, was able to get it by Kelly Rudy. And you notice Kelly Rudy didn't complain much about that one. He knew it was in. And you talk to the Canuck management, and their best defenseman has been Dana Merzen. They feel he's playing as well as he possibly can. And look at this play. Driving past Alexei Zhitnik, getting a stick on the puck and getting it by Kelly Rudy. And they don't feel the rest of their defensive core are playing up to their capabilities. And Matt Quinn also wants his defenseman jumping up into the play, as Dana Merzen did right there, in making it 1 0 Vancouver. Didik shot from the line, blocked in front. Ronning was in front of. Rudy and Rob Blake was trying to take him out of the play, but despite the difference in size, he was having problems with Ronnie. He's got the puck now. Ronnie makes the shot, slides it in front, but he can't go through after it as he was tied up by Mark Hardy, and a penalty is coming up with 744 remaining in the period. Closed captioning of this afternoon's game is sponsored by Household, providing Canadians with a family of financial services. Mark Hardy drawing a roughing penalty on Cliff Ronning and the first power play of the hockey game for the Vancouver Canucks to lead it by a score of 1-0. They had a short power play already tonight. One for four on Friday, five for 15 on the series, and that's a very good average. They have been able to control the puck in the King's zone. Babbage is the lone man back at the point. Linden attempted to get it to him, and it finally does come back to the big rear guard. Bure along the boards, having problems controlling it. He gets it again. Adams for Linden. He couldn't get a shot away as he was checked by Reichel and Marty McSorley. Brings it to center and then dumps it down the ice. Shoots it in. Charlie Huddy goes back after it, and he's able to clear. It's deflected over the glass and out of play. A lot of the Canucks' success on the power play has to do with Trevor Linden and his ability to win face-offs in the offensive zone. He's been very strong on the draws, and although he hasn't been the dominant player that he was in the Winnipeg series, he has been good on face-offs. He was a 17-year-old playing for the Medicine Hat Tigers, the Memorial Cup champions in 87-88, 
the team coached by Barry Melrose. Trying to keep his streak alive for Babich. Out of these one point in all nine games. The Canucks have played. Six against Winnipeg and three so far against the Los Angeles Kings. Gave Babich in deep and Charlie Huddy was able to drag him down and get the get the whistle as his team was in trouble. Marty McSorley was in behind the net. And you see the playoff experience, and that means so much when you get, you're the underdog, you go on the road. Charlie Huddy was very strong in game two in Vancouver. He leads the playoffs in the plus minus category at plus 11. And wasn't he the original winner of the plus minus award in the NHL at some fantastic number like a plus 68 when he was with the Edmonton Oilers? His first year with Edmonton and an offensive star. Marty McSorley can't get it out against Babbage. Adams has it in the corner. Back of the net for Bure to the line to Babbage. Over to Craven. He tried to one time and it went off the heel of the stick. Honey steps into Bure. McSorley is in the corner trying to tie it up. Linden manages to get a stick on it. But Honey stays with him and knocks it away from him. And now it's fired the length of the ice with. 38 seconds remaining in the penalty to Hardy. Ronning is forced to circle back. Gretzky chases him behind the net. In the neutral zone, Ward can't handle it. Curry moves it back to Tim Waters, and he'll drive it the length of the ice. King's doing a good job in the neutral zone. Gretzky picked up a loose puck and managed to get a shot away in forechecking for the Kings. Portnell moves it down the right side. Tim Waters gets back and he'll flip it out the center where Gretzky has it as Hardy comes out of the penalty box. Gretzky gets set. Fires off a stick up into the crowd. Battle back on Hardy. He didn't like it. But the puck's already gone down. John, for fans who might complain about the price of tickets in other NHL arenas or the playoffs, those great side seats at the Great Western Forum are 300 per ticket. That's U.S. Based. The only people who could afford them go the Hanukkah Curry Russell. Corey Miller. Or Donnelly. Donnelly flips it out. But Renato can't get there. Nedbeck. Gets to the line, trying to put it between his legs for Cortnell, but it's picked off by Mellon, and then Mellon is knocked down by Cortnell. Donnelly throws it rink wide for Granado. His shot is high and wide. A whistle on the play, and it looks as though a penalty has been assessed against the Vancouver Canucks. 4.55, the time remaining in the opening period. Jim Sandlack gets a high sticking penalty on Mike Donnelly right in front of the Canuck bench and look look at where Dan Marowelli is. He's right there about five feet away. And that's a high sticking penalty on Sandlack. And then watch Yerky Lume on Tony Granato. A little left hook here right there on Granato's chin. Granato noted for being something of an instigator. Robotov back to the line to Zitnik. Over to the other side to Blake in for Gretzky. Gretzky being watched by Craven. Over to Blake for Zitnik. Zitnik moving in. A shot up high. The rebound loose in front of the net. And Kirk McLean in trying to clear. Almost had it bounce back and passed him. Blake. For Sandstrom, his shot goes wide. Lume trying to clear. Puts it over the glass out of play. Canucks will get that shot from the bad angle away all night long. The Kings power play working the puck around well. But they ended up giving it to Sandstrom on the angle. And not much chance of scoring from there. Barry Melrose talks about his team and how they think positively no matter what the score is at any time in the game because they know they can score goals and put up some big numbers. Melrose in saying the Los Angeles Kings were the underdogs. I think was being just a bit facetious. Here's Gretzky with a shot. Rebound and score. Sandstrom. And a puck. 
power play goal for the LA Kings. Now watch Dave Babbage on Thomas Astrom. Gretzky pulls it out to give himself a better angle. Kurt McLean on the deflection can't handle the rebound. And look at Babbage. He's there, but he doesn't tie up Sandstrom's stick. Thomas Sandstrom limited to 39 games this year because of injury. And Sandstrom on the power play with Gretzky drawing the assist. Ties it. Robitaille also gets the assist on the fifth goal of the playoffs for Thomas Sandstrom. 15.49, the time of the power play goal that ties it at one. Here's Murray trying to break through, and Sidora hooked him and will get a penalty. And Sidora banks his stick down because Bure realized that he couldn't get the puck. The puck was too far ahead, and so he went down and put the pressure on the referee. Now watch Bure, the puck slides well ahead of him. He knows he can't get it, so he goes down and draws the hooking penalty. Well, I mentioned that uh, Thomas Sandstrom has been out of the lineup during the regular season for a lengthy stretch, 45 games. Corey Millen missed 42. Gretzky at the start of the year missed 39, didn't return until the 6th of January. And Dave Taylor missed 34 games. So some of their key players were out of the lineup for long periods of time. And now they're all healthy and well rested. That's why I was saying I think Barry Melrose uh, a little tongue in cheek when he was saying that uh, the Los Angeles Kings should be the underdogs because with all his players in the lineup he feels they have a most potent offensive team. Cliff Ronning getting set for Ward. Ward's checked by McSorley and Huddy gets it to the line kept in there by Craven. Ward plays it back to the point for Babbage. Here's Ward with a shot, and the rebound bounced away from Cortno. Gary Curry brings it up ice. Marty McSorley joins in the play. Curry dumps it back of the net. McSorley is knocked down as he goes to the front of the net. He and Babbage got sticks up against each other, but there was no whistle. Craven fires it back of the net for Ward. Ward is hit by McSorley. Waters trying to dig it out and get it out. Kept in at the line, but now it's picked up by Conacher. Conacher has Taylor with him. Conacher trying to go around Craven, and he's checked just at the last minute by Jeff Cortman. 35 seconds remaining in the penalty. Ward is flattened at center ice by Blake. Blake gets up and gets back into the play as Curry tries to work around Lume. He's tied up. The puck goes loose in the corner. Babel Bure dodges a check from Gretzky. Bure leading the power play attack for Vancouver. Fakes the shot. Now tries to set up. Gets it back to Lume. Into the corner. Back to Bure at the point. Two seconds remaining in the penalty. Bure tried to slip it through, broken up by Gretzky, couldn't get it out, but now it does bounce back to center ice as the Kings are at full strength. Bure winds up, his shot goes off the stick to the corner. Adams tried to free it, comes to the line, Lume keeps it in. He dodges a check, Lume getting set, tried to slip it through, and it was knocked away and down the ice by Huddy. Linden did a good job of tying up Millen, and as a result, Lidster was able to touch it for an icing call. On the power play, the Vancouver Canucks had a couple of chances, and this man, Dixon Ward, was involved. Now watch Ward come out of the corner. Here's the shot, and the rebound goes right by Jeff Corton. Look at him bat it, try and get it out of the air. Doesn't get it, and the Kings are able to get it down. Kings very aggressive on their penalty killing. This is in the Canucks zone. Babbage comes in with the hit. Watch Jeff Corton. He gives McSorley a little bump. And then Pat Conacher, again shorthanded, goes around Robert Dirk. That's Murray Craven. But look at Jeff Cortnell come in. Cortnell does a good job defensively, comes back. Now watch this suicide pass. 
you got to look back for a weak little soft pass. You're going to get killed. And Dixon Ward almost got killed with that one. Robitaille on the right side for Granado. A centering pass, and it bounced away from Millen. Millen was knocked down, and back comes Vancouver with Tim Hunter. Flipping it down the ice as we move into the final minute. Charlie Huddy watched back of the net by Hunter and then dodged a check from Hunter. He saw Hunter coming, put on the brakes, and Hunter turned the other way. And Gerald Diddick's going to get a penalty right here as Diddick had his elbow and stick up on his hit. Pete Demers is out. And it's Corey Millen down. And Diddick's only going to get two. Here comes Corey Millen. Look at Diddick, the stick right in Corey Millen's face. Corey Millen's not very tall, but Diddick had the stick up there pretty high, and Diddick's gone. Steve, what have we got coming up in our first intermission? As usual in our first intermission, we'll have the coach in the corner, Don Cherry and Ron McLean from St. Louis. And Don will have some thoughts on the Norris final, and we'll have Ford's great playoff goalies tonight featuring George Hainsworth. All that coming up in our first period intermission. And we're 52.3 seconds away from a break with the score tied at one and Los Angeles on the power play. They've had a couple of good chances. Remember their first power play, Wayne Gretzky thought he had a goal. Kurt McLean robbed him. And then Sandstrom's goal came with the man advantage. Jitnik being watched by Semenov. Now Bure will move in, but the young Russian defenseman gets away from Bure. Takes it back to the net, couldn't control it, runs into a check. Semenov tries to clear, kept in by Blake, fakes the shot. Blake now moving in, lets the shot go off the side of the net. Sandstrom for Gretzky. Gretzky in front and Robitaille fanned on it. Sandstrom has it now. Sandstrom to Jitnik. Jitnik over to Blake. In for Gretzky. To Blake, a shot. Sandstrom a wrap around the temp fires it on his forehand as he couldn't stuff it past Kirk McLean. Great wide pass picked off by Bure. Bure comes out to center with Semenov as the horn sounds to end the first period. Good puck control by the Kings and what a pass by Wayne Gretzky to Luke Robitaille. Kings pressing the Vancouver Canucks and the more penalties that the Canucks take the better chance for the LA Kings. The power play looks pretty good tonight. The Canucks allowed only uh, two shots on goal in the final uh, eight minutes of that opening period. 12-11 in total, the shots on goal favoring the Kings. The score after 20 minutes of play, 1-1. In the first round of the playoffs, 108, the time remaining in the penalty to Gerald Diddick as the Kings start the second period, tied at one and on the power play. Drops it off for Blake. Blake couldn't pick it up, and Adams starts back. Blake stays with him, forcing Adams to circle at center ice. Now the puck comes free to Robitaille. Over to Gretzky. Gretzky, cross ice pass for Robitaille. They go! McLean has it. Now, it was his glove in the net. Whoa, what a save by Kirk McLean. Robitaille is protesting, claiming that the glove was in the net. The red light did not come on. And now, watch this play. To Robitaille, here's the shot. Now, is Kirk McLean's glove in the net? It definitely looks like it is there. And if they do go to the replay, I think we will have a goal. Now, Wayne Gretzky is saying, let's go upstairs. Now, the upstairs video judge does have the ability to call a goal. Now, that one's, it sure looks like it's in the net. Well, I think they're going to uh, rule that McLean did make the save, even though it looked uh, now Dan Marawelli has been called over to the timekeeper's box, and they are going to review it on videotape. Wally Harris is the supervisor, and that's one of the supervisor's responsibility. If he sees it's a goal, he can call down. Now watch the net and the glove. Look at the glove, look at the net. That's got to be across the line. 
And Kurt McLean does a good job just getting his glove on it. What a save it was, but I think it was across the line when he got it. Gretzky immediately went over to Marrowelli. And now they are going to uh, take a look at there's, it. There's Wally Harris in the green shirt. The video goal judge is John Pemberton. He's sitting with Wally. Wally was sitting down. And Dan Marowelli now is talking things over with Dave Babbage. And if I was a Vancouver Canuck, I don't think that would be good news to me. Well, it is not good news for Vancouver because they have ruled that Luke Robitaille has scored to put the Los Angeles Kings ahead. But what a quick love by Kirk McLean, even though the puck was past him. He stayed with it. And it took video replay to determine that it was in the net. And you could tell Kurt McLean didn't complain very much. Look at the shot and look at where the glove is. It's all behind the line, it hits the net, and McLean gets it out. And you can see that where the net bulged when McLean's glove hit, and Pat Quinn is shaking his head. But I'm sure the Canuck coaching staff sitting upstairs has the same replays we do, and there's no doubt when we have that angle that the puck's in the net. The off-ice officials for this game are from San Jose. Gretzky and Sandstrom draw the assists on Robitaille's fourth goal of the playoffs at the 37 second mark. A power play goal in the second period. And you see there, Gretzky and Robitaille are screaming at the goal judge, but most goal judges look right along the ice. And that shot was halfway up. And there's the goal judge. Glad that they have video replay. So the Los Angeles Kings hold a 2-1 lead. As Mameso fires it into the corner, Sandlack tried to keep it in. He was having problems with Sador. Ronnie turns, trying to get away from Conacher. Conacher stays with him, and Sador fires the loose puck the length of the ice. Racing back after it is Lidster if he gets there in time, which he does. It's an icing call against Los Angeles. Look at the ice time after the first period and notice who had the most. Rob Blake has been the key in the last couple of games. Nine minutes and five seconds. He plays most of the power plays. Wayne Gretzky, 8-10. And Cliff Ronning, who was very good in game three, at 6-10. And look at the faceoffs. Wayne Gretzky on top of his game in every area, 8 out of 11. Pretty even neutral zone faceoffs are included. That's why we have the 26. But pretty even in the offensive zone. Cliff Ronning did not practice with the Canucks yesterday. He stopped a shot on his foot in game three, and there was concern right up until the time he took the three-game skate today as to whether or not he would be in the lineup for this fourth game. Dumped out by Gretzky, thrown ahead by Dana Merzen, picked up by Ronnie. Ronning fakes the shot, now lets it go. It goes off the skate. Sandlack has it in the corner, and the net is off its supports as Charlie Huddy, back trying to defend against Mimeso, crashed into the Los Angeles goal. Faceoff is in there. The L.A. zone is Sergio Mimeso was driving to the net, and the Canucks want more of that from Mimeso as Mimeso wants a penalty. Now watch Mimeso come into Charlie Huddy, gives him a shove here. Now Huddy knows he's out of position, so he quite willingly pushes the net off. It's Moorings, face off deep in the L.A. zone. Mameso in games four, five, and six against Winnipeg was driving to the net just like that. And as a result, a defenseman had to pick him up. Even though he isn't scoring, he forces the defenseman to cover him when he does go for the net, as he just did. And he did get one big goal against Winnipeg. Same situation, drove to the net, got a rebound, and got a winner. Here's Donnelly coming in against Merzel. Donnelly for Granado. His shot is blocked. Merzel. For Lume. Semenov couldn't go anywhere with it. Now it's picked up by Bure in the neutral zone. For Semenov. Semenov is forced to circle back by Corey Millen. For Merzen. Merzen takes a bump from Rob Blake. And Jitnik is sandwiched as he fires it around the boards. Two Canucks drove in on him. Bure and Tim Hunter. Hunter has another player lined up and he steps into Corey Millen who tries to pick up the lead pass and it's deflected away from him and Lume throws it the length of the ice going back after it is Zittner. 
Really no alternative as he was being pressured, but to fire at the length of the ice. High to the corner, Robert Dirk. Hasn't seen a great deal of action in this game after dressing for the first time in game three. He's out there now. He has the puck. Moves it ahead to Cortnell. Cortnell has checked. The puck goes loose. Murray going in along the backhand shot, and he couldn't pick up the rebound. And a big save by Kelly Rudy. One on one with Pavel Bure. As Mark Hardy was beaten cleanly at the blue line, Rudy bailing him out. 17 14 remaining in the period. Babbage plays the puck off Nedved. Hardy back after it. He takes a hit from Sandlack, is knocked down by the Canuck winger. Sandlack has it a shot high. That's off the glass. Thomas Sandstrom trying to get it out. Babbage keeps it in. Puck picked up in front. Cortno getting set. He slides it to the goal. They score. Nedved with his first playoff goal, grabbing the rebound off the shot by Cortno. The LA Kings running around in their own zone as you look at Barry Melrose. A couple of great chances. Pavel Bure was in by himself. Now look at the coverage right here. The Kings running around. Cortnell all by himself gets a shot. And where's Peter Nedved? Thomas Sandstrom is there. Doesn't tie up his stick. And Nedved just shoots it into the empty net. Look at Sandstrom. He's right beside Peter Nedved. And yet he lets Nedved get the shot away. Peter Nedved had gone nine games without scoring. A man who scored 38 times during the regular season, and he ties it at 308. Cortnell and Babich draw the assists. 2-2 as Craven drives it in. Reichel along the boards. Manages to kick it past Linden. Fired in, and that hits. Greg Adams inside the line, resulting in an offside call. He'll be right back after this message. Peter Nedved has tied the game with his first playoff goal. John, there was a feeling before the playoffs began that for the Canucks to be successful, Peter Nedved would have to produce. He was a big part of their offense during the regular season. And you look at Pavel Bury and Greg Adams, and then the running line, if they can get three lines going with Peter Nedved going, it really would be a force. 16-16 remaining in the second period. Playoff action resumes tomorrow on CBC when we switch to the Patrick Division final in Pittsburgh. Game five of the Igloo between the Penguins and the Islanders. That's a 7.30 start Eastern time, 4.30 Pacific. On Tuesday, join us for game five in the Norris Division final from Toronto between the Leafs and Blues, and that one is a 7.30 start Eastern for all viewers except those in Alberta. Immediately following the Leafs game, all viewers from coast to coast will see game five in the Smythe Division between Vancouver and L.A. That's a 7.30 start from the Pacific Coliseum in Vancouver. Face off to the right of McLean. Did it. Put it up high in the glass. Couldn't get it out against Tony Granato. Now Lindster flips it ahead to Adams. Adams throws it up into the center ice area, but Linden could not pick it up. Granato is upset by Didick. There's going to be a penalty against Vancouver. So Gerald did it jumping up into the play, Don, and he had no chance, and it was a poor penalty for Gerald Diddick. Here comes the pass. Now watch Diddick. He's too far away to try and get Tony Granato, so he sticks out the foot, gets his stick on him, and takes a penalty. Both Los Angeles goals have been scored on the power play. They needed the video goal judge to make a decision on the second one, and in case you're wondering, that's the 18th time that video replay has been used to determine whether or not a goal has been scored in the playoffs. Six times for the puck crossing the line, twice for the puck being in the net prior to the net coming off its supports. Seven times whether or not it was uh, locked in with a hand or a skate. And Fourteen of those calls initiated by the officials, four of them including today's by the video goal judge. And what a bonus it's been in these playoffs. I think it's a great asset to our game. And that's an offside call, not a penalty call. Luke Robitaille missed a chance right at the end of the first period on a power play on a pass from Wayne Gretzky. But Gretzky set Sandstrom up, and then Sandstrom threw it across to Robitaille. 
And Robitaille, a left hand shot facing that puck. He doesn't miss many of those. One of the fans at the Great Western Forum trying to get a close up of some of the action. And wherever you're looking in on this Mother's Day, we hope you're enjoying this second part of a Hockey Night in Canada doubleheader. Game four of the Smythe Division Final. Jitnik was checked as he got to the line, and Jitnik goes into the corner hard against Lume. The puck comes free. Semenov was trying to move it over to the right side for Bure, but it was picked up. Back after it goes Blake. Again, the shoot in by Blake, but. Kings were standing still at the blue line and they couldn't get to the puck in time. And Kirk McLean handling it, setting it up for Doug Lidster and the easy clearing pass. Daryl Sador is forced to circle back by Greg Adams. Now Millen, who can fly, comes to center. Millen for Granato, a shot and a glove save by Kirk McLean. Talked about the intangible things that the LA Kings have, the advantages of the LA Kings, and this is one big one. Charlie Huddy, Yari Curry, and Wayne Gretzky combined 14 Stanley Cups, and then Marty McSorley and Pat Conacher with three between them. And you get players that have played that many games and played in the Canada Cups and all those other high pressure things, they get used to this playoff atmosphere. Now here's the last rush and this, the speed of the Kings. Look at where the Canuck defense end up. They're backed in, backed in, and the shot by Granado is handled by Kirk McLean. Another tough save by McLean. Back to the line to McSorley. Over to the other point to Donnelly for Millen. Back to McSorley. McSorley into Sador. Long shot, but knocked down in front, and the Canucks clear. Sador, defenseman, had gone in deep in a penalty or in a uh, forechecking role on this uh, power play, and he was staying in deep as Donnelly had moved back to the line with Marty McSorley. Penalty to Diddick is over. Renato couldn't handle the pass as it was picked off by Nedved. Nedved pokes it ahead for Sandlack. Sandlack with a shot that goes off Sador. Sandlack goes back to the net. Sandlack looking for someone to give it to as he falls. Puck still inside the Los Angeles line. Ward couldn't go anywhere with it. Carson overskated it. And then Ward steps into Granado and sends him flying. And it's an offside call as it was brought in at the Vancouver line. Good hit on Tony Granado by Dixon Ward coming back. And again, Granado had his head down at the blue line. Look at Granado, and in comes Dixon Ward. Good solid hit. No elbow involved. And Ward looked over at referee Dan Marawelli just to make sure. Dixon Ward and Gary Volk have been sharing ice time during the regular season and during the playoffs. Ward really played himself onto the team just by hits like that and good hands around the net. And both products of North Dakota. Dixon Ward establishing a number of records at UND. Of Duke, Alberta. He took quite a physical beating in game three of the playoffs, but he dishes out a good hit in tonight's game on Tony Granato. And the shot from the point by Dirk, he broke his stick. Puck slid to the net, and the stick hit Rudy. Rob Blake, at the end of the Kings power play, watch Robert Dirk stand up, and right there, give him a two-hander. And that one's not called by Dan Marowelli. Blake thought it should have been. He went to the bench right after that slash. Linda along the board. He's checked by Huddy. Huddy is knocked off the puck. Curry. Stopped by Diddick, who raced in from the point. Mameso couldn't handle the pass. Lidster trying to pinch in against Reichel, but the Los Angeles player got there first. Mameso has his pass picked off by Huddy, then Mameso gets it back. Ahead to Linden. Linden coming in with Ronning, the shot by Linden. And that was deflected up high over the glass. 
And Warren Reichel did a great job coming back as the Kings were trapped two on one. Reichel, who has been an offensive star, comes back and picks up Cliff Ronning. And Linden had no choice whatsoever as Reichel did his job defensively. And Kelly Rudy made the save look easy. Now watch, here's Reichel coming back, the turnover. And look at Reichel, spots Ronning and goes right to him. And it's easy for the goaltender and the other defenseman when a forward comes back and picks up the free winger. You suppose that Lyndon was saying to Tim Waters, you've been around long enough, you don't really have to play with the helmet? That's right. <laughs> Again, the Canucks trying to use their size, a little bit of emotion involved as we look at Cliff Rodding. He's got a little Hollywood connection. His daughter is in Look Who's Talking 3. His daughter, Taryn, has a part in that. And Cliff's looking for an introduction to Kirstie Alley. <laughs> Hard to be off. Bure. The seminar. Conacher banks it off the boards. At center ice, it's picked up by Gretzky. Bure is forced to circle back. Now he moves it ahead to Lume. Lume with Seminoff. Lume getting set. Can't get a shot away. Now moves it to Bure. Seminoff in front of the net. Semenov was tied up by Zhitnik. Centering attempt blocked by Rudy. Erzin along the boards, keeps it in. It goes to the other point to Lume. Lume plays it back to the net. Again, the Canucks with good pressure. Here's Burre. He and Tim Hunter collide, and it's flipped down the ice by the Kings. And this is an icing call with 11.23 remaining in the second period. Well, although most of the cards have probably been opened by now, we send our Hockey Night in Canada greetings to all the mums in our audience with a special hello to mothers and wives of our production crew here at the Great Western Forum. I'm sure I'm going to have to take my wife out for dinner for Mother's Day whenever we get back done. Well, we'll be heading to Vancouver tomorrow for game five that takes place on Tuesday night at the Pacific Coliseum. And the Vancouver Canucks would love to return home with the series deadlock as the score is right now at two. They've had some good forechecking pressure here in the second period. They have used their size and they've been taking the body, especially on Blake and Jitnik, wearing down the Kings defenseman. Robitaille and Portnell move before the puck is dropped. Nedved gets the draw back to Dirk. He fires it to the corner. Huddy bumps along the boards. Courtnell gets it. Courtnell walks in. A shot, the rebound. And that's cleared to the corner before Nedved could get a stick on. That's twice now Courtnell has been able to walk in. Picking up a loose puck. Nedved out front of Courtnell. He whacks away at it. The puck is loose. There's a scrum in front of the net. It's still loose, and Sandlack couldn't get to it. Nice little pass by Peter Nedved, who's picked his game up a little, and Kelly Rudy with a couple of good stops in close. Sandstrom forced to circle back by Courtnell. He moves it ahead to Robitaille, who takes a bump along the boards. McSorley. Tried to slip it in, but it was broken up. 10-26 remaining. The score deadlocked at two in game four of the Smythe Division Final. Robert Dirk fires it in as the Canucks make the change. Tick Waters back after it. Donnelly chops it out of the zone. Did it. Banks it off the board. Ward couldn't pick it up. Granato races after the loose puck. But Courtnell got there first, and Courtnell is taken in heavily against the board. Here's Ward in front for Craven. He scores! The Vancouver Canucks take the lead as Murray Craven takes a centering pass from Ward, and it's 3-2. And Jeff Courtnell started the play by getting hit by Tony Granato, feeding it up. And look at Marty McSorley coming back on Murray Craven. Again, you have to tie up the guy's stick. McSorley's there, but he can't get Murray Craven's stick. Craven does a good job. He's a left-hand shot. He's facing the pass. 
And look at Craven, get in position, stick on the ice, perfect pass from Ward, and no chance for Kelly Rudy. Murray Craven acquired just before the trade deadline from Hartford with his third goal of the playoffs. One of the reasons the Canucks made the deal was to get some experience and also a player who could work on the point on a power play that had been struggling late in the year. Ward and Diddick draw the assists on the goal by Murray Craven, his third of the postseason. That goal has taken the crowd out of the hockey game here at the uh, Great Western Forum. Now, Cliff Ronnie gets it to center. And Messo will drive it in. Linden takes the buck along the boards. Reichel tried to flip it out, and finally, with some help, they move it up. Here's Blake coming in. Blake shoots, save, and the big rebound picked up by Linden, and a whistle on the play as the net is taken off its supports. Trading two on ones, the LA Kings and the Vancouver Canucks as Ward threw a two on one pass across to Craven on the goal. Here's a clean two on one. Kirk McLean handles it easily as Rob Blake is forced to take the shot. Gerald did a good, did a good job staying in the middle and forcing Blake wide, giving his goaltender the shot, and Kirk McLean made the save. Kirk McLean, game four of the Winnipeg series, was absolutely outstanding in a 3-1 Vancouver win. He's been steady throughout. I thought in the third period in game three, didn't look nearly as sharp, and four shots in a row beat him. Zeminoff comes in with Tim Hunter, but Hunter was ahead of the play offside. You talk about Kirk McLean. At the other end, Kelly Rudy has been very good, especially here in the second period where the Canucks have forced the play. Now uh, watch Murray Craven come in. Marty McSorley turns late to go with Craven. And by the time he turns, Craven's in behind him. Stick on the ice, perfect pass from Ward, and no chance for Kelly Rudy. Rudy gave up seven goals in the last two games, but he made key saves at the right time. That's right. You see the shots on goal in this period, and I think that's very reflective of territorial edges that Canucks have forced to play in the King's zone. Dana Merzen throws it up into the center area. It was knocked down by Donnelly, but the Kings could not gain control. Passes too far for Peter Nedved. It slides right to Rudy. Zitnik off the boards for Granato. He chops it to center ice. Sandlack dodges a hit from Donnelly. Donnelly thought he had them all lined up. And Sandlack spotted him at the last moment. Puck is stolen by Nedved for Sandlack. And that is fired wide. Nedved. Tried to shovel it in front, and here come the Kings, four on two. Blake couldn't handle the pass, and Merzen was able to flip it down the ice. Merzen had a two-on-one going the other way as Sandlack and Nedved were in behind the Kings defense. Reichel racing down the ice, and uh, as he touches the puck, the whistle goes on an offside pass with 7.59 remaining in the second period. The, uh, the LA Kings and Barry Melrose score goals we're going to win but you can't give up the kind of chances they have here in the second period because the Vancouver Canucks are a very good goal scoring team 36 5 sure that's a great record but they're going to give up five or six tonight the way they're playing well the Kings have scored the most goals of any team in the playoffs 48 coming into this one and with three they're now at 51. Uh, pardon me, with two, they're at 50, but they have also given up 43 goals, and that's the most of any team in the playoffs. Conacher couldn't handle the pass. Sador try and set something up. He dodges a check, flips it high to the corner. Conacher tied up by Babbage. The two of them go into the end boards. Dirk also moves in there with Sandstrom. Puck comes back to the line. Charlie Huddy keeps it in. Back of the net. Gretzky has it. Gretzky looking for someone to give it to. 
Gretzky having problems gaining control in the corner. Now it's flipped ahead to Burre. Burre coming in against Sador, and it was knocked off his stick, and then Sador and Burre bump along the board. Charlie Huddy starts back. Huddy lets the long shot go wide, and penalties were assessed behind the play against Burre and Sador. They bumped at the blue line and continued the battle as the play moved up ice. Charlie Huddy did a good job on Burry at the blue line. There's Charlie Huddy tying up Burry, and here's the hit from Sador. Burry didn't like that. Gives Sador a little shot, and away they go. And now. It looks like the Vancouver Canucks are going to get another penalty. The gate to the Vancouver penalty box is open. Marawelli had skated over to uh, where the faceoff was going to take place, and then someone must have said something because he immediately raised his arm and skated over to the penalty box. And I don't know, there's nothing up on the board, so Tim Hunter is the closest player to the box. He might be getting a misconduct penalty, and it, it looks that way as he's headed to the dressing room. So Tim Hunter is being ejected. Tim Hunter, who has been used sparingly tonight, is gone to the gate. He's going to stay and watch for a while. Seven minutes left in the period. Pretty good seat here. That would be a $300 ticket right there, Don. He's down close to the glass. I don't think anyone will try and collect from him, though. A high-sticking penalty against Bure, a roughing penalty against Daryl Sador, and the 10-minute misconduct against Tim Hunter. So Hunter heads off to the dressing room area, but uh, stays in the runway with only seven minutes remaining in the period. Now watch Sador on Pavel Bure right there, and Bure spins around and gives Sador a shot. Sador's got his stick up high. It's a roughing penalty, and look at the left hand by Pavel Bure, and they both go. Four skaters against four as Didick takes it back of his own net, being watched by Gretzky. Ahead to Linden. Linden crossing with Ronning. There's the shot, and it went off Blake's stick. Ronning throws it out front, picked up by Didick. A shot, he scores! Defenseman jumping up into the play and proved to be effective again. Cliff Ronning working in the corner. I think that's the key to this one. As Didick was right on the blue line, he was wide open. Defensive coverage by the Kings lacking, but Ronning fights for the puck and then clears it. Look at Ronning right here on Blake. Down on the ice, clears it. Look at where Didick is. Right in the middle, screen shot, snaps it by Kelly Rudy. Hey, third goal and the fourth point. So Gerald Didick makes it a two-goal lead for Vancouver with 6.38 remaining in the second period. In this second period, though, the Canucks have been dominant. Over the last nine minutes, Los Angeles has had just two shots on goal. Ronning and Linden draw the assist. Big Sorley took a shot that went off a leg. Robitaille couldn't pick it up at the side of the net. Back comes Ronning. Ronning for Merzen. He scored a goal. Back to running a high shot that's gloved and knocked down by Kelly Rudy. Marty McSorley working towards the net and it's offside. And back to the net after the whistle goes. Merzen, McSorley, and Linden do some pushing and shoving. And then Trevor Linden comes in from the side. Marty McSorley is trying to get involved again. And we're going to have penalties handed out here by Dan Marawelli. And this one's not over yet. We already have four on four hockey. So there's not as many players on the ice. Well, it looks as though Trevor Linden is still upset with uh, Yari Curry. Ray Scapinello has to uh, step between 
Curry and Linden as the Los Angeles player was heading towards the penalty box. Here's the play. Marty McSorley is already offside, and he gives Dean Immersion a little shot. Trevor Linden comes in, and then McSorley challenges Linden, and nothing happening there. Now well, McSorley has gone to the penalty box. Dana Merzen has gone to the penalty box. Trevor Linden is unhappy that he is sent there as well. Marty McSorley, who led the NHL in penalty minutes this year with 399, has been a mild-mannered Marty McSorley in the postseason. He's been instructed by the LA Kings. He's played so much, they need him on the ice, not sitting in the penalty box. The way things have been going over there, Dan Marowelli calling penalties in this second period. The occupancy code may be in jeopardy. And you see Pat Quinn looking on. He's had a much more enthusiastic and emotional game from his team tonight. And I think Trevor Linden's been a big part of it. He's been involved, and there got involved physically with Marty McSorley. Another look at Gerald Diddick's goal, and look at Cliff Ronning. Rob Blake has him down, but Ronning throws it out, and there's Diddick all by himself, nobody even close. And the snapshot goes by Kelly Rudy. And Trevor Linden moves within one point of Thomas Gradeen. Stan Smeal and Cliff Ronning tied in goals, and the way Cliff's playing, I'm sure he will tie Thomas Gradeen for the goal scoring. So Merzen and uh, Linden have gone to the penalty box. Yari Curry and Marty McSorley for Los Angeles. And the penalty calls. Merzen two minutes for Rafi. McSorley, Curry, and Linden all the same sentence. Curry Craven, who scored the go-ahead goal. That's a long shot go wide. Picks it up. Craven goes back to the net. He's spun around by Blake. They continue the battle along the boards. It comes to the line and is knocked up to center ice. Blake racing after it over to Gretzky. Gretzky crosses with Blake. Gretzky shoots. The save by McLean and the rebound fired to the boards by Ditta. Gretzky picks it up again for Zitnik. He couldn't get a shot away. He was on his backhand. Zitnik. Has to throw it in, back of the net. Sandstrom, knocked down by Lidster. Lidster lost his stick in the process and was fortunate that he didn't pick up a penalty. Lidster just let his stick go, and I think that's why Dan Marwelli didn't call the play. Sandstrom looking to draw the penalty. Did it. Moves it ahead, picked off by Granato. Games again at full strength. Donnelly and Craven bump in the corner. Craven falls down. The puck is underneath him, and it finally results in a whistle. 4:41 remaining in the second period. The Canucks lead by two. Rob Blake does a great job on this two-on-two. -two. Watch Blake take both defensemen out and create some open ice for Wayne Gretzky. Kirk McLean again standing his ground and making the save. Lume moves it ahead to Bure. Bure in the first three games. He flips it behind his back to Lume. Only had eight shots. It's an offside call against Vancouver. Bore only had eight shots. He had 407 during the regular season. And I'm sure uh, Pat Quinn passed that message along to Bore that he has to shoot more. He certainly did in the first period. He had three shots to lead the Vancouver shooters in the opening 20 minutes. Here's Yerke Lume. Now, he didn't like the way Daryl Sador was chopping at him after the whistle. That was an offside call. And Lume... Stuck the glove in Sidor's face, and Lume has been playing with a little fire tonight. We saw him in the first period get Tony Granato a shot, and I'm sure Pat Quinn has his message across to number 21. Kirk McLean. Well out of the net, played the puck up along the boards. It's cut off by Granato. At the other point, Charlie Huddy. Trying to keep it in. Mark back up to center ice. And then Donnelly takes a hit from Ward. And Ward, who was on the receiving end of some pretty good hits, dishing them out tonight. Here's a centering attempt. Seven off. Backhand shot. Penalty coming up as the puck is picked up by Daryl Sador. Penalty call against Los Angeles with 4-0-3 remaining in the period. Dixon Ward driving to the net, and it was Tony Granato who had him all tied up. 
And Granado's gone for holding. Granado got there late as the Kings coverage has been for most of this period. Look at Dixon Ward has position and Granado gets there. Ward still gets a stick on it. And Kelly Rudy has to make a good save. A holding call against Tony Granado as the Vancouver Canucks send out their power play unit. The power play has not been very good tonight. They haven't had many chances on Kelly Rudy with the man advantage. And we saw Ray Scapadello in the last game. And look at here. Yerke Lume's stick comes down. Almost catches Scampanello in the face. One of the few officials who does not wear a helmet. Tim Waters trying to whip it around the boards. It's kept in at the far point by Craven. Good job by Craven to get to that puck. Now Conacher gets to the line. He was poke checked there by Craven. There's a penalty coming up against Vancouver. So with 141 remaining in the penalty to Lume, the advantage will be negated by this call against Portnell. Well, on this Mother's Day, it's appropriate, I think, to ask this bit of trivia. How many ladies have their name inscribed on the Stanley Cup? Well, there's three, Don, and there they are right there. Uh, the Di Bartola family owned the Pittsburgh Penguins in 91. The Scurfield family, part of part owners of the Calgary Flames in 89, and the Norris family, part owners of the Detroit Red Wings back in 55. And there's Marie Denise's name inscribed in the Stanley Cup. And oh, there's a whole bunch of us who <laughs> wish we had our names right there with them in any aspect of the game. Well, in the history of Stanley Cup playoff activity, only 853 players have ever been involved in a winning performance. Blake gains the line, drops it off for Granato, a long shot through some traffic, and that goes wide as it's kicked out. Seminoff. Circles at center ice to get away from Sandstrom. Coming off for Bure. Bure circling, trying to get away from Jetnik. Bure goes to the corner. Jetnik trying to stay with him. The puck is freed. It's picked off by Sandstrom and dumped out. Gretzky was upset by Bure, and the fans thought there should have been a penalty call. Now Gretzky gains control. Gretzky for Blake. Blake works his way in. Saved by McLean. Sandstrom attempted to center. It was blocked. Gretzky with a backhand shot. That goes wide. Gretzky back of the net. Gretzky throws it in front of the net, and McLean knocked it away. From Thomas Sandstrom behind the play. Sandstrom and Lume do some pushing and shoving. Here's Murray with a shot. That hit the post. The boards for Gretzky. Craven trying to stay with him. Robotai moves in and lets a shot go from the blue line that is deflected wide. Gretzky comes off in a change as Linden works his way to the blue line. He falls, dumps the puck to the corner. 155 remaining in the period. Now Granado starts back. Robotai works his way up to the line. Robotai upset by Dinnick. Linden puts it to the line, not out. Then it's flipped down the ice and a lead pass for Cortno. Cortno going in. He scores! Despite being pestered by Marty McSorley, Cortno makes it 5 2. Jeff Cortno out of the penalty box, and you could hear Kelly Rudy banging his stick, warning his defense that Cortno was coming out, and nobody listened. There's Daryl Sador. He's trapped up, and you see Murray Craven. Nice pass to Cortno, and look at Marty McSorley. Had the hook on Cortno, but couldn't get him down. And look at McSorley right here. Cortno uses his strength, pull it to his backhand, and beat Kelly Rudy. So the Canucks take a 5-2 lead with 135 remaining in the second period. 
And I think the fact that the Canucks have moved in front has been indicative of the play for the most part in this second period as well. They really have. They've dominated on the scoreboard and very much so physically. They've been the instigator of most of the hits here in the second period. Dave Tanner races in. His shot had saved by McLean. Ronnie. Lead pass. He was looking for Cortnell again. It was just a little too far for him. Reichel for Taylor. Over to Conacher. Conacher getting set. His shot is blocked. Puck loose in front of the net. McLean poking at it. They knock it in. They score. But I think it may be waved off. I think the whistle had gone. I thought I heard a whistle up here. Went and I don't know whether they're going to. Dan Marwelli hasn't waved it off yet, but I think we're going to have it waved off, and the Canucks will definitely get a penalty. Well, Robert Dirk is going to the penalty box. Now, here we'll have the sound as we can hear it upstairs. Now, can you hear a whistle at home? Well, that was close. That was close. Robert Dirk's gone for holding. And that's two now for the LA Kings that have been scored just after the whistle. Well, I think Pat Quinn would trade that one. A uh, goal for a penalty. Anytime. 107 remaining in the second period. Steve, what have we got in our second intermission? Don, I'll be talking live to number 99. We'll find out if Wayne Gretzky really is having fun in the game. He loves so much and plays so well. And Ron McLean will have a post-game report from St. Louis and the least big 4-1 win over the Blues earlier today. All that coming up during our second period in a mission. Pat Conacher is over talking with Dan Marwelli as we look at Robert Dirk in the penalty box for holding at 18.53. I thought I heard a whistle that time. The Dave Taylor one, I did not, but on that play, I thought I heard the whistle well before the puck was shot into the net. Well, the Canucks might suggest turnabout is fair play. They had what they thought scored two goals in game three that were both disallowed, and tonight the Los Angeles Kings have twice put the puck in the net, and the two goals have been disallowed. Dan Marowelli saying that the whistle had gone before the puck went in the net. Dana Merzen finds an opening and he'll fire at the length of the ice. We move into the final minute of the second period. And again, it was Trevor Linden taking that face off, winning it back, and giving his team the opportunity to get it down. Jetnik tries to work through. Sandstrom picks up the puck. He's checked, and it's fired the length of the ice by Lume. Blake leads the attack. Sandstrom along the boards, bumped by Linda. Puck goes behind the net. Merzen flips it, but not out. Robitaille couldn't take Gretzky's centering pass. Luke Robitaille, the puck was a little bit behind him, and he halfway fanned, hesitated, and by the time he decided he'd stop it, the puck was gone. 17 seconds remaining in the period. Gretzky passing on the right side, too far for Sandstrom. McLean plays it up along the board. Blake gets it over to the other side. Zitnik with a shot. Blocked the puck loose in front of the net and fired down the ice, and this will kill off the final seconds in the period. A period dominated by the Vancouver Canucks. Physically and in front of the net, they forced the turnovers, and instead of the LA Kings having all the chances, it was the Vancouver Canucks creating their own chances, skating through the checks, using their size, and then putting away their good scoring chances. A very strong second period for the Vancouver Canucks, and after 40 minutes of play, they lead the Los Angeles Kings 5-2. second period 24 20 overall Los Angeles will start the third period with still 53 seconds remaining in the penalty to Robert Dirk and Wayne Gretzky talked to Steve about how important it is for them to get a quick goal get the fans back in it and give themselves some confidence 
Jetnik. Goes back, being watched there by Linden. Linden has done an excellent job in a penalty killing role for Vancouver. And very aggressive. Merzen, in front of his own net, gets it to the line. Jetnik kept it in, but now Linden picks it up and fires at the length of the ice. And again, Kings on the shoot in. Can't get to the puck in time. Robitaille leaves it at the line for Sandstrom. Back to Robitaille. He tried to one time it. That went off the blade of the stick and up high. Seven seconds in the penalty. Blake shot that hit Robitaille at the side of the net. Merzen bumps with Gretzky. Dirk comes out of the penalty box. Gretzky back to the point to Zitnik. There's a shot at the side of the net. Blake bangs away at it, but even though Sandstrom raised his stick, McLean was able to pin it against the side of the goal. And McLean in good position. You look at ice times after two periods. Wayne Gretzky averaging just over eight minutes. And look at Rob Blake. 18.05, Cliff running a little less as they were killing some penalties. And as you mentioned, Don, the uh, Trevor Linden doing a great job killing penalties. Faceoffs. Anatoly Semenov replaces Murray Craven. Took nine draws, did very well. And Wayne Gretzky, who was so good in the first period, only three for eight in the second period. Faceoff to the right of McLean. Jimmy Carson, limited ice time in this series, and particularly in this game. I don't think he's had more than three or four shifts, has he? And trailing by three goals, they want Jimmy Carson to create some offense. Seminoff at center ice with Bure. Bure has to turn back for the pass. Now he flips it to the corner. Marty McSorley goes after it. McSorley looking to push it ahead to Granado. It was picked off. Here comes Bure with Mameso. Mameso fires it wide. Another one of those outman chances. Perfect pass by Bure. And Mameso had Kelly Rudy beaten, but just missed the net. Sador trying to fire it up on the right side for Reichel. It was beyond him. And this is icing against Los Angeles. Marty McSorley got trapped up ice, and the Vancouver Canucks had a two-on-one. And you can see his teammates saying, good try, Serge. And it was a good try. Look at Pavel Bure with the flip pass. Perfect pass. Mameso shoots it right through Kelly Rudy, out the other side. And Mameso still is shaking his head as he heads off to the Vancouver bench. Glorious scoring opportunity. And Sixth goal, I think, would pretty much put it away for the Vancouver Canucks. They are comfortably in front now, 5-2, with 18-15 remaining in the period. And trailing by three, the Kings will take even more chances than they normally do. Well, the Kings have had a tendency to run around a little in their own zone, and Vancouver has been forcing Los Angeles, particularly in the second period. Rink-wide pass for Conacher. Conacher puts on the brakes in front for Taylor. It was beyond him. Back to the line now. Zitnik with a shot. Knocked down by McLean. He had some traffic in front of him. Big Dave Taylor was there, but he was able to get an eye on the puck. Sandlack in front. A quick shot. He scores! Jim Sandlack takes the pass in front and whips it up high on Kelly Rudy. Jeff Cortnell has really been a factor tonight. He's been under the skin of the Kings, and he's created some things offensively. And it was Cortnell that threw that perfect pass to Sandlack. Again, an outman situation, three on two, pass to Sandlack in front, right hand shot going the other way, and that's the hardest save for a goalie because you have to come across with the shooter, and when he's able to shoot back, it's hard to react, and Kelly Rudy really had trouble reacting to that high shot by Jim Sandlack. Coming into this game, the Vancouver Canucks had six regulars who had not scored in the playoffs. Sandlack was one of them. Peter Nedved had also failed to score. Well, Nedved and Sandlack are on the scoreboard now. But in all fairness to Sandlack, he has played fewer games. Here's a shot by Linden that's blocked. Back to Linden. Linden's shot is blocked by Conacher. The puck in front of the net. Adams trying to get it to Linden. Now to Ronnie. Ronnie takes his time. Couldn't get the shot away. Lume with a shot. And the save by Rudy. And again, the Canucks creating a lot of pressure. 
in the Los Angeles zone. Granado tried to throw it in front. It was blocked along the boards. Linden will free it for Lume. Lume has Adams with him. Checked by Sandstrom. Ronning has to go back after it. Picked up by Ronning. Ronning will drive it in. Reichel was trying to stay with him, but Ronning was able to fight off the check. Reichel bumped by Ward. Ward has really been a physical presence for the Vancouver Canucks this afternoon, or this evening, I guess it is now. That big hit by Rob Blake early in the game rolls up Dixon Ward. Here's Craven with a shot, the save by Rudy. As Dixon Ward was coming in two on one, a centering attempt for Sandlack beyond his reach. Babbage keeps it in for Craven. Craven up front for Ward. He fires it wide. Sandlack fires it wide. He had Rudy down and an open net, but he missed to the short side. Canucks getting all sorts of opportunities early in the third period. They've scored one by Jim Sandlack and lead it 6-2. Ward dumps it in as he goes to the bench on the change. They're changing. Jetnik for Robitaille. Robitaille drives it to the corner. Curry racing after it, but Didick gets there ahead of him. And Didick will clear the zone. This is what happened to Kelly Rudy in the Calgary series, and then he started guessing on everything and was replaced by Rob Stauber. Curry. Pick it up as he tried to come out. Here's Zitnik with a shot. That deflects high, picked up by Mameso. Goes to circle back by Robitaille. Mameso flips it high. It comes out to center where Zitnik has it. 15 minutes remaining in the third period. 6-2, the Vancouver Canucks lead. Here's Burre. Burre taken in against the board. The puck goes to Mameso. Blake. Then bumps with Mameso in the corner. The puck picked up by Zitnik. Jetnik drops it off for Curry. Curry shoots up high. Curry gets it again. Curry drops it off for Sador with a shot. That's blocked. Knocked to the corner by Robitaille. Merzen ties him up. Semenov battles with Curry. The puck comes free to Jeff Courtnell. Lume jumps up in the play. Courtnell quite content to drive it in as the Canucks make another line change. Pass intercepted by Portnell, and his shot deflects off Charlie Honey's stick up high into the crowd. 14.08 remaining in the period. Tonight's game is coming to you from Inglewood, California. A look at both goalies. Kirk McLean has not been tested with the three-on-twos, two-on-ones like Kelly Rudy, especially in this period. It's been all Vancouver and all wide open in the King zone. Well, Pat Quinn has gone with Kurt McLean all the way in the postseason. Here's Donnelly for Conacher. And I don't think he'll be making a change for game five, but who knows what decision Barry Melrose may make. Hardy with a shot from the point. Sandlack leaves it along the boards for Nedved. His pass was beyond Portland. Marty McSorley shoots it in. Lane has to play it. As a result, there was no icing. Cortnell and Lidster drew the assists on the Sandlack goal at 218. It made it 6 2. Cortnell working his way in, drops it off for Nedved. Nedved to the point, did it with a shot. And the rebound was deflected, but not past Rudy. McSorley with a shot. Big rebound. Donnelly after it. Back to McSorley. McSorley dumps it into the corner. Lidster gets there and plays it up along the boards. Picked up by Zitnik. He dodges a check for Donnelly. Donnelly throws it towards the net. With Granado driving for the goal, McLean steered it to the corner. Back to the point now to Zitnik. A shot through traffic. That goes wide. From the other side, another shot knocked down in front. Donnelly picks it up in the corner. Donnelly feeds it back to Blake. Blake shot saved by McLean, and Ronning skates away with it, but there's a whistle on the play. With 12.34 remaining, a penalty coming up. Doug Lindster gets an interference penalty on Tony Granato, the first good pressure of this period by the LA Kings, and Lindster pulled Granato down in front of Kirk McLean. 
Parsons long shot. Fans are getting on Kelly Rudy. <laughs> what have you done for this late? <laughs> Rudy is the uh, Kings all time leader in playoff wins. He's looking for his 20th today, but it's not to be. It doesn't appear. Blake with a shot. It goes wide. Blake has it again. Another shot. This one is deflected wide by Robitaille. And Linden will clear it. The length of Blake for Gretzky. He redirects it. Vancouver zone. Babbage has it. He has room. He has an opening and he clears. Again, that long pass to Gretzky. He's standing still at the Canuck blue line. He had no choice. Shoot it in, and the Canucks are back to clear it out. Jetnik trying to cut through. Lost control of the puck. Babbage goes to the corner with Gretzky. And again, the Canucks clear. And at that time, Jitnik tried a one on four as he tried to break through the defense. Nothing going. Again, an easy clearing by Vancouver. Murray knocks it away from Curry. Rudy plays it up along the glass, and Curry starts away. He has Carson going for the net. Couldn't get a shot away as he was checked by Merzen. Back to McSorley. He lets the shot go. That's blocked. Lume behind the net. Takes his time. The ice, 20 seconds remaining in the penalty to Lidster. Daryl Sador working down the right side, gets away from Merzen, then is tied up by Ward as the puck goes to the corner, but Sador gets it again to McSorley, a long shot, blocked by McLean. Knocked out to center ice, and Greg Adams is checked. Lume picks up the loose puck. And Lume is checked as Blitzer comes on the ice. The Canucks are back at full strike. Sandstrom with a long shot that goes up high into the crowd. 10-24 remaining in the third period as Dirk and uh, Reichel are talking over in the corner, but nothing is going to develop there. The LA Kings have a fine tradition of breeding coaches or general managers in the National Hockey League. You look at the 73-74 LA Kings, and how many of those, Don, can you pick out who are, are or were involved at the management coaching level in the NHL? Well, not from that picture, but <laughs> I can identify them for you if you wish. Go ahead. Bob Berry. Currently coaching the uh, St. Louis Blues, Bob Murdoch, Mike Murphy, Barry Long, Butch Goring, Dan Maloney. And a bit of a trick part to this question. Rogi Vachon, whose uh, number 30 jersey has been retired at the Great Western Forum, was a head coach for two games. And now management level, vice president of the LA Kings. Kings this playoff series playing for the first time in the month of May. The exception of the expansion teams, San Jose, Tampa Bay, and Ottawa, Winnipeg is the only NHL team that has never played a hockey game in the month of May. Waters with a shot. Conacher takes it back to the net. Out front. Taylor was checked. Couldn't get a shot away. Conacher has it again. Taylor took quite a beating in front of the net. Conacher thought he was wide open, but just as he threw the puck out front, Taylor was flat. Babbage with a long shot, the save made by Rudy. Again, a rather derisive reaction from the fans at the Great Western Forum. Two line pass as Donnelly touched it in the neutral zone with 9.18 remaining in the third period. 6 2. The Vancouver Canucks of Pat Quinn appear to be heading home on a charter flight this evening with the series deadlocked at 2. You talked about that hit on Dave Taylor. All the defense has played that way tonight. You look at Yurke Lume, who is usually not a physical player. He's been taking the body. And you look at Dave Babbage. He's played well. Gerald Diddick has played exceptionally well tonight. Robert Dirk has been a physical presence. The entire Canuck defense has played like the big defense they should play like if they want to really win this series. Well, you suggested at the start of our telecast that the Vancouver Canucks would probably play a more physical game. And I think we've seen evidence of that right from the start. And a more emotional game. After the whistle, they've been there and they've been in the LA Kings face. They're a bigger team. 
And they should play like a bigger team. There are going to be penalties here. Tony Granato and Jeff Cortnell, two of the biggest agitators in the NHL, and away they go. Well, Cortnell, the last time he went to the penalty box, stepped up to take a pass and score a breakaway goal, a goal that made it 5 2. And you can see Cortnell now talking things over with Tony Granato in the penalty box. Now Cortnell's just getting up after Cort after Granato had knocked him down. Goes right over to Granato and the way both of them go. Jeff Cortnell has had an opportunity to visit with brother Russ of the Minnesota North Stars, the former Minnesota North Stars, now the Dallas Stars. He lives in the offseason in the Los Angeles area. Looking for homes in Dallas. Norm Green has flown the wives down and had realtors and school people there to take care of the families of the North Stars who are going to be the Dallas Stars. Russ was telling us yesterday that he's quite excited at the prospect of uh, taking the NHL to the Lone Star State. Lendon's shot goes off the end boards. Picked up now by Zitnik. Zitnik knocked off the puck by Lume. And Lume starts away slowly. Almost didn't get it past Millen. Picks it up again. Drop pass. Linden with a shot. Bad save by Rudy. As a goaltender, how did you react when the fans got on you, John? When, <laughs> when they've done it that often and you get to the, be the age of Kelly Rudy or at the end of my career, you get very used to that, and it doesn't bother you very much. We love you if you win or tie. That's right. Keep the score close. 7.55 remaining as Marty McSorley pinches in from the point. Now, Mark Hardy comes over to cover up for McSorley, who was trapped in deep. Dana Merzen will flip it off the boards and down the ice. 38 seconds remaining in the penalties to Granado and Cortman. Game five at the Pacific Coliseum on Tuesday night, and then the teams will return to California for game six on Thursday. Curry circles at the line, throws it towards the net, and a good save by McLean with Luke Robitaille right in front of him trying to redirect it. Drop pass for Pere and he fired it wide. What a rocket he let go. And again another three on two for the Vancouver Canucks. Hardy being watched by Semenov. His pass is picked off. Cortko fires it wide as he stepped out of the penalty box looking for a second consecutive goal coming from the penalty box. Dirk trying to play it out of the zone, put it over the glass, and out of play with 6.47 remaining in the third. The Canucks comfortably in front by four. Immediately following this hockey game, the Vancouver Canucks will charter home to Vancouver while the Los Angeles Kings will practice at the Great Western Forum tomorrow morning before taking a noon charter up to British Columbia. Vancouver Canucks, I'm sure, will uh, enjoy their ride home with the series deadlocked at two. Nedved into the slot for Sandlock. He drops it off. Cortnell shot his glove. Kelly Rudy throws it over to the boards to Reichel. Reichel frees it for Sador. It was almost picked off. Now Charlie Huddy works his way in across the line. Long shot. Knocked down in front. McLean has to come out of his net to play it. And finally, it's flipped out of the zone by Sandlot. And with a 6-2 lead, you can afford to handle the puck like that. Kurt McLean wanted to keep it going. Almost got trapped. Reichel shoots it in. Sandstrom can't get to it as he's tied up by Ward. Ward has played a very solid game for the Canucks today. He really has. He's set up a goal, a beautiful goal to Murray Craven and has really been a physical presence. 537 remaining in the third period. Many of the fans of the Great Western Forum have already given up on the Kings, the team that they were uh, cheering so loudly at the start of the game. 
Greg Adams in the slot let his shot go. It deflected up off the glass. Adams has a nine-game streak going. That is a Vancouver club record. Ward dumps it to the corner. Adams has picked up at least one point in every playoff game the Canucks have played. But so far, he has been shut out in the 6-2 Vancouver lead. Adams will get it for running, and running was checked by Zitnik. Couldn't get a shot away. Tim Hunter. His first shift since uh, serving his misconduct penalty. Fired up along the boards, and the Meso manages to keep it in. Hunter goes back to the net. Up front for Ronnie. The puck is laying right in the crease as Rudy made the save, and it's cleared by Rob Blake. Meso has it. Meso is knocked down. Hunter, he's knocked down by Blake. Puck loose in the corner, and Corey Millen puts it around the other side. This aggressive forechecking of the Canucks really beginning in the second period, causing the Kings all sorts of difficulties. 4.08 remaining in the hockey game, 6-2 the Canucks lead. Many of the fans who attend hockey games at the Great Western Forum are also fans of the Los Angeles Lakers of the National Basketball Association. Well, it hasn't been a good day for fans of either side as the Los Angeles Lakers in their NBA playoff game in Phoenix lost in overtime 112-104. Phoenix wins the series and here Kings are going to go down to defeat with 354 remaining. Here comes Nedved. Nedved works his way in and his shot is deflected and it goes over the glass and out of play. Many of the spectators at the Great Western Forum on this very, very warm day in uh, Los Angeles have already headed to the exits. Marty McSorley is getting a tripping penalty on Jeff Cortnell. And with the score 6-2, you'd wonder whether the LA Kings will try and send a little message to the Vancouver Canucks for the next game. A tripping call against Marty McSorley. You remarked earlier in this series that when it comes to a physical game, the Canucks have the edge because of their size. They are taller, they are heavier than the Los Angeles Kings. They really are, and uh, they, you look at the LA Kings roster, and other than Warren Reichel and Marty McSorley, when you do get into a physical battle, how do you match up with the likes of Gerald Diddick, Robert Dirk, Tim Hunter? Sergio Momesso, Jim Sandlock, it's just no contest. Well, it takes a large number of people to bring a Stanley Cup playoff game your way on Wilson Hockey Night in Canada. And you see on the screen the names of some of those who have worked hard in providing coverage of game four of this Smythe Division final from the Great Western Forum. Hey. Greg Adams. Flips it back to the net. Sandback lets it go to Lume. Lume tried to dump it in. It was blocked. Kept in by the Canucks, but Sandlack missed Adams as he was trying to go to him in the slot. Nedved heads off to the bench. He appears to be in a great deal of pain. Shot in the center ice area. Adams dumps it to the corner. Ronning goes after it. Blake got there first, and he clears. And that looks like a shoulder injury as trainer Larry Ashley is over attending to Peter Nedved. Lume. Goes in deep. Lume out front. And Adams scores. He keeps the streak intact. 2.55 remaining in the hockey game. And Greg Adams makes it 7-2. And his 10th game, you talked about the club record that's in the playoffs Peter Nedved had a 15 game point streak this year as you watch the Canucks come in and again Mark Hardy gets beaten wide comes out to Greg Adams nice little move quick hands for a big man you look at Dave Anderchuk with the Leafs and Greg Adams is the same way six foot four uses that big reach and he does have the quick hands and for Greg Adams that is his fifth power play goal Lume and McLean draw assists on the goal by Greg Adams and for McLean that's his second point of the playoffs. 
I think he has a playoff point bonus. <laughs> We're concerned about whether or not he can stop it, and he has played well tonight, allowing just two goals, 35-30, the shots on goal favoring the uh, Vancouver Canucks. McLean coming well out of the net to play it ahead. Tim Hunter flips it down the ice. He and Sador buff along the boards. And behind the play, Sador and Manesso were bumping and shoving, and penalties are going to be assessed here. And Mameso took a swing at Charlie Huddy. Mameso was getting the original penalty, and then Sador came in. And in a 7-2 game, you don't mind that. You like that youthful enthusiasm. It's not going to make any difference. And Sador showed his team spirit by going right after Sergio Mameso. And you remember the 1982 Smythe Division Final? King Richard Brodeur, the main difference for the Vancouver Canucks in that one. Tiger Williams shown there. And there's King Richard doing his thing, as Kirk McLean has done here tonight. And at the other end, it was Mario Lassard in net. And the Vancouver Canucks proved to be victorious in that one, went on to beat Chicago in five games in the next series. And there's King Richard shaking hands with Dave Taylor, who is the only King member still around. And someone asked Barry Melrose if he remembered that 1982 series, and he said, what I really remember about it is that both teams had ugly uniforms, and the Clampets came from Los Angeles. <laughs> There's Daryl Sador on Tim Hunter. And there was no penalty called on that one. It was Mameso and Sador. Mameso gets two for slashing, and Sador gets two for roughing. Jim Sandlack on the ice and Marty McSorley on the ice along with Gerald Diddick. So we have the potential for a little more with 218 left. You thought in game three that things in the final few minutes of the hockey game might get a little ugly. I suppose the potential for fireworks exists right now with the players on the ice that you talked about. Curry tried to dump it in. It was blocked. Now Marty McSorley is checked. Gary Curry goes after the loose puck. Couldn't get there in time. 150 remaining. Gerald Diddick leaves it behind the goal for Doug Lidster. Back to Diddick. Diddick for Craven. He had problems picking it up, and he's quite content to flip it back into his own zone to Lidster. Simply moving the puck around in their own zone, looking for an opportunity. Did it. Brings it up ice and fires it in. We mentioned earlier that the Kings have scored a lot of goals. They have also given up a lot. They have scored 50 in the postseason to lead the NHL. Here's a penalty against Marty McSorley. Quite similar to the way Tim Hunter played against the Winnipeg Jets. Tim Hunter went over, looked like he was going to run Marty McSorley, and it was McSorley who reacted with the clothesline. Now watch Marty McSorley here. Here comes Tim Hunter, and McSorley gets the stick up. Now look at McSorley get that right hand up on Tim Hunter, and now it looks like Tim Hunter is going to get the penalty. Well, they've opened the gate to the Vancouver penalty box, and Tim Hunter is the player heading off. Now, Jeff Corbel can't believe it, and I, I have to wonder about that one as Marty McSorley had the right hand up, and Hunter is pointing to the scoreboard. Tom, Tim Hunter didn't get involved in any fisticuffs as Marty McSorley was standing there challenging him. And I think Tim Hunter thought, like you and I, Don, that Marty was going to get the penalty. I wouldn't be surprised if Marty was thinking much the same way. 108 remaining in the hockey game and following the game, the Molson three stars. John Garrett will be making the choices. And like the previous three games in the series, I think the winning team will have all three stars. It's been interesting that way in every game. The team that has won has had the three stars. In 
into the final minute of the hockey game. Zitnik drops it for Gretzky. Gretzky with two assists. Plays it back to Blake. Blake shot is blocked. Racing after it is Greg Adams. It was knocked away from him by Blake. Or by uh, Blake, yes, picked up by Zitnik. Back to Blake. Blake at the point. Gets it over to Gretzky. Back to Blake. There's a shot. Saved by McLean. Puck is flipped down the ice with 20 seconds remaining. Penalized players coming out of the box. Robitaille throws it into open ice. Lidster takes a look at the clock before firing at the length of the ice, and that should pretty much do it. And not too many fans remain at the Great Western Forum to see the final seconds tick off. The Vancouver Canucks whipping the Los Angeles Kings 7-2 to square the series at two games apiece. And it was a Canuck-style game. They got away from their game in the games they lost to the Kings. They played a wide-open game, didn't play a physical-style game. Here tonight, they did play that physical-style game. They were the big team. Their defense played very big, and they scored on their good chances. Jeff Cortnell was a factor. Greg Adams continued his streak. Dixon Ward played a physical presence. And as always, they got the good, steady goaltending from Kirk McLean. As a matter of fact, even one of the goals that beat him, he got it, but it was already over the line. Well, I'm sure in the post-game discussions, people will be talking about the two goals that the Los Angeles Kings thought they had scored that were disallowed. Pat Quinn, the coach of the Vancouver Canucks, was talking about the two goals that the Canucks had disallowed in game three following the Friday the uh, Friday night encounter. But it's the same as in game three the LA Kings did not deserve to win tonight. They did not play very well. And in game three the LA Kings did not play very well. So the Vancouver Canucks will have a very pleasant plane ride home this evening with a 7 2 win over the Los Angeles Kings. Kirk McLean making 31 saves in a 7-2 Vancouver victory. With the three stars, let's join Steve. The Molson three stars tonight from Inglewood in game four. The number one star, Jeff Cortnell, who seemed to be all over the ice tonight. He had a goal and two assists. A strong playoff game from Jeff Cortnell of the Vancouver Canucks earns him the number one star. The number two star, the Canucks big captain, Trevor Linden. He had an assist tonight, but his physical presence was certainly felt by the Los Angeles Kings. And the playoff rookie, Dixon Ward, also from the Vancouver Canucks, who had an assist, and he too was a big physical presence for the Vancouver Canucks tonight. It's a Hollywood type headline that tells the story of game four, one the Kings would like to forget and would like to reverse.